Welcome back to another video. We're going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to walk you through what all I do to get ready for a, even a short session. Now, I have a giant mess in my garage. I have, you know, old rigs, old everything that, you know, I try to reorganize stuff maybe once every month and a half just to make sure, you know, I'm not going to run out of something. I always take spares along as well. First thing I'm doing is just going through like my alarms. Uh, these batteries will last like a year to two years. I usually change them out once a year, but I know people who had them two years, just using the Delcoms. And I uh, just want to get everything in order. Now I had these in my other bag, so I just swapped them out. Usually what I'll take along, I got my three TXIs and my receiver. I take a spare headlamp. I've had this happen more than once now, actually probably about four times. Okay, a few things happen. I take a lantern and I've run out of propane already. Even though I take extra, some of the walks I go on are pretty far, so you can only carry so much, even with a barrow. So I ran out of lantern. I usually carry a, a, my normal headlamp, with, which is a Petzl. I have that in my other bag. And that one there, it's very high power, so it goes through batteries really quick. And I had that run out the one time. So it, you're at the mercy of you have no light and you're trying to do rigs, you're trying to do whatever. Even taking photographs, it's hard. Now you have on my phone, you know, I have an app for a light there, but who wants to be holding up a phone when you're doing stuff? So I went out to Walmart and I have an Energizer one, it's like 20 bucks. I just keep this as my spare in here. Uh, I only had to use it twice now, just because I ran out. Usually I try to charge up my batteries. Got my indication range from Signet. Now watching the, we the weather forecast. It's supposed to be windy most of the day today, so I'm going to be using the uh, flexi arms and the little bit heavier bobbins. That way I know I'm not going to get any false indication. And then also I do have my light ones, just in case it changes up. Uh, probably till, usually around the full moon, you have a lot more wind than say uh, any of the other moon phases. So I do have my light indication as well from Signet in the chains. Now these ones are detecting very light sensitive bites. I'm going to take these along just to play it safe uh, just in case it gets really calm which I doubt it's going to happen. It's always good to have a little bit extra. And so I'm just uh, putting these in the one pouch here. And uh, take my tools along. Uh, I know I do the Delcom quick releases and I always take an Allen key just in case they loosen up or you know you never know what's going to happen on the bank. I always try to take the tools along, that way if the situation does come up, you're going to be good. So right now we're good, I got all my alarms, everything I need, zip this up, we're good there. So that's step one. Basically what I'm hoping for tonight, I put out bait for a little bit last night and night before, hoping that fish are in the area. I haven't fished this one for a while, it's a little bit weedier. Uh, not heavy weed, but enough that it can mess up a rig. I cast out my underwater camera before, and I could see definitely some growth, maybe about this high. So it's nothing crazy, but it still could affect it. Uh, my bait of choices, which I'll be showing you shortly, I'm going to be fishing with mainly live system tonight, and then on two rods, and then probably one rod with Equinox. And then I'll switch back and forth depending on which bait is getting the most bites. Now this time of year, I'm guessing Equinox is going to outperform, for me anyhow, it seems like the Equinox outperformed the live system. And yeah, I was making up different pellets and things like that. Before I went too far, I just wanted to make sure I was actually recording. I couldn't remember if I hit the record button, so sorry about that. So back to what I was saying is, uh, this time of year, Equinox has been really good for me year-round, but I noticed in the cool water months, which is starting to turn into, it outperforms my other baits, so that's why we're using that. And I'm going to use a little bit bigger baits today, uh, 24 mil, and then I'll do like an 18 mil also with the, uh, the live system. Got my pop-ups, going through those, see what I have, making sure everything's good. And I do a little prep work, you know, a couple days in advance. I notice a little goes a long way with your prep work, so we're going to go into that right now. So let's head out to the kitchen. I'll show you what I got going on. 
Alright, so this is what we have here. On my right, we have the Equinox pellets and Equinox 10mm boilies. And all I did was put the liquid additive and also the dip over top of these. And then that way it has time to soak in overnight. You can see they're still, yeah, they're soaked in good. They're not, they're a little bit soft, but they're not uh, enough that it's actually breaking it down. All this is going to do is release attraction into the water. And I'm going to put a stick mix on there. Now you can actually get the bag mixes from CC More, but I actually ran out. So that's why I'm making this. The bag mixes have everything already incorporated into it. Uh, ground up boily, additives, pellets, uh, stick mix, you name it. They have all kinds of good stuff. Now my lab system, you can see these are actually stuck together really good. I had uh, Mino Blend 365 in here over top. And because it's a little bit thinner, you can see it absorbed a lot more into the pellet. And uh, say so I actually have to break this one up, whereas the other one came apart pretty easy. So we got that there. Get these back in here. And basically all I'm going to do at this point, I'm just going to put over top. Uh, stick mix matching stick mixes on each one. I'm going to do the you know, live system here and then the equinox here and I'm going to do that in a second. Okay, I forgot to mention before these are actually going to be used for my bag mixes and my sticks so that's why uh, I'm doing these ahead of time. We'll get the maximum attraction we can out of these. Now uh, let me fix the camera here. Change my mind. I'm actually going to do Equinox on the Equinox. I'm actually going to do a milk and nut crush over top of the live system pellets. I think that'll be a good match. So we're going to start that now. All I'm going to do is just start uh, spooning it in here. Just sparkle it around. We're not really trying to do a lot. This is just going to uh, coat the pellets and boilies. Again, this is going to break down. This is going to break down in the water. You can see. You can see it kind of coats them instantly. So we're going to basically have multiple layers of attraction breaking down over time and hopefully drawing the fish in a lot faster. Now you can put the pellets up to the top almost because all this uh, stick mix this is going to go to the bottom. It doesn't really take up a lot of space. So if you think that you need a lot of room for the stick mixes, you really don't. Now you can add other ingredients into here, which I'm still debating on if I want to add something else into here. I might add like oyster shell to see a little bit more uh, weight on the mix. But basically that's all we're going to do. I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see like what this is starting to look like. Like when you look at this, you can see the the pellets are now coated. So I'm going to continue on with that one. I don't want to bore you with it. Does take about five or ten minutes. Now the bag mix, milk and nut crush, same thing. I like this because uh, the other thing in the fall, it seems like the fish really like nutty, uh, nutty combinations. So there's a lot of that in here. So again, we're just mixing it in. You know, coating everything. We're just adding a layer of attraction. Um, even though the baits are fine just the way they are, just using boilies and pellets, I like to maximize my chances for success. So I try to boost my baits as much as possible. I'll bring this over in a second. Again, I'll continue on with this. Again, now it's, it's almost like a pale white color compared to the other ones and uh, they're coated. So you can see the uncoated ones compared to the coated. And that's basically what we're working with. I'm going to make up uh, some sticks. I usually try to make uh, a stick for each rod. That way as soon as I get there I know I can just cast out. Uh, this place I've been to before uh, many times, so I know exactly where the sweet spots are. I'm not going to be really messing around too much, filling it out. 
I know where I need to be casting to, so that way I can get rods in the water as quick as I possibly can. So I'm going to work on this some, and I'll show you what else I got going on. Usually I just kind of go through my bags to see what I need, make sure I have all the hooks I need, every little thing possible. The worst thing to do is forget something uh, essential to your fishing. So that's why I try to check before something, uh, before I go fishing. I'll do this like maybe once every two months, maybe a month, depending on how long I've been fishing, how many times I've been fishing, just to ensure I have everything I need. So let me finish up my bait here for my mixes, and then I'll show you how I prepared my boilies last night. Alright, as you can see, I'm going through all kinds of stuff here. Uh, now, I usually keep this in stock probably well in advance. Now, I just made a new batch last night because I did run out, but I usually try to make sure I have plenty. And all I do, uh, for instance, these are Equinox boilies, two different sizes in there. And what I do is I'll put the either dip or the additive over top. Uh, pour it over and just keep going like that. Now all my boilies are going to be coated. It'll take a few minutes to do that, but they're really going to soak into the boilie itself. So, again, uh, what we're going to do, same thing as we did with our stick mix. I'm going to put it into a separate bucket and actually put some of the stick mix over top so it coats it. That way when I'm chumming these out, extra attraction. And same thing with the uh, live system. I've got a separate bucket here. You can see that. Did probably maybe two kilos, something like that. I mean, it blend 365. Shake it up real good, get a good coating. You'll see it glistening on there. Make sure everything is glistening. And that's how I'm boosting some of my boilies before I go on my sessions. Uh, a lot of times, what I'll do though, I'll keep the same buckets for. It could be a year because all that, um, all the extra dip or whatever you're putting in is going to settle on the bottom. So you put your next batch in, it'll be a little bit thicker, but it sticks right to the boilies and it doesn't go off. As long as you don't add any type of water to this, it won't go off whatsoever. So as I use these up, I'll put more live system boilies or Equinox, put a little bit more dip over, shake it up, and just keep repeating the process. Sometimes I'll have these sitting for months. The longer you do this, the more traction that will soak into the boilies. Now that's one of the edges I do with, um, I have my little blood pots over there and I have actually Feedstem XP uh, soaking into the live system. It's been my go-to for probably about two, three years now. Uh, Feedstem XP and live system. I have ones that are really dark brown and I some that I just made that didn't really soak in much yet. But doing that with an acid pair pop-up, it's a guaranteed fish anywhere I go to. It's just been really effective for me, so that's why I stick with it. You know, why change something if it's not, you know, if it doesn't even change. So, right now, I'm going to finish these up. All I'm going to do is uh, get my bucket here. And as you saw, like, where I was making my stick mixes, uh, that lid will just sit on top here. These are the buckets from Tracker. Um, all I'm going to do, first thing is, uh, i got to go find my stick mix, which I have right over here. Let me grab that. And all I'm going to do is put some in before I put any boilies. That way, they're not going to stick to the bottom too much. Even that out so it's flat. And then we're going to put some of the boilies in here. I'm going to be taking a decent amount tonight because I have a feeling it's going to be a really good night. And just sprinkle some of that over top. The cool part is, as long as you're using like one of the, the concentrates or the liquids, it's not going to go off unless you add water to it. So if there's a bunch of excess, you know, the uh, milk and nut crush mix in here, you can still use it. It's not like it's going to go bad. Uh, right now, I just need a lid. Let's see where... Oh yeah, it's out there. Well, it won't matter. We can just go like this. And, uh, 
this up here so you can see. And it's probably hard to see on camera, but everything is coated now. They're not really wet anymore because it started to absorb into the stickiness. I'm going to put a little bit more. Again, shake it up. And there you go. You can see now they coated even more. It's hard to say. You know, see it on camera probably because these are so uh, light in color. But trust me, they're definitely. I could probably show you this way. You can see the difference in color. So that's basically what I'm doing with my baits beforehand. Now they're just a little tacky to the touch, but by the time I get to the lake, they're going to be harder around that boily. But as soon as it hits the water, settles on the bottom, it's going to start to dissipate all that stick mix in the Amina Blend 365. So, should be good to go. You know what, I think the plate's safe. I'm just going to do the whole bucket. I have, a, I have a good feeling about tonight. And again, if you look at this, there's some on the bottom here. All I'm going to do is go ahead and get some more live system, put it in here, and then I'll be good for next time. But I'll do that off camera. Again, since I added more, I need more stick mix. Mix this up here. It helps to have the lid on. That way the dust or anything, you know, the mixes doesn't go in the air. But it should be fine. Just add a little bit more. Now we got a little bit left here. Just do the whole thing. All right, and we're good. So I'm going to do the same thing with my Equinox, and we're basically baits ready to go. I'm just going to make up a few uh, stick mix, you know, a few sticks like I said. That way when I get to the lake I'll be good to go. And now I'm going to go through my pop-ups. Today I'm going to be using the uh, Elite Acid Pair. Elite Acid Pair. The Golden Spice has been awesome this year so I'm definitely taking that tonight. And let's see here. The Elite Dairy Supreme. Those are pretty much my three go-tos as of right now. As the seasons change, so do the fish. So, I think if anything, I think these two will probably be the best choices today. Golden Spice and Acid Pear. But Dairy Supreme has always been good. Had my PB mirror on this last year. So, you just never know. It's good to have a few choices. I always take, I'll probably take a few other ones too just to play it safe. Always take choices with you. You know, that way you can adjust and adapt to what you're doing. I still have to get my rods ready. I had my 9 foot set up because I went catfishing last weekend and now I'm going to switch over to my 12 foot so I just have to change over my rigs and my rods and reels. Uh, do that. I have my bag behind me for my barrow bag. Got my barrow in the truck right now and just basically make sure I'm not forgetting any hooks. I'll make up a few rigs. Usually I try to make up, uh, I'll do the rods over again that way I have fresh rigs on. And then I'll make rigs once I get to the lake. That way I can make them right then and there. Uh, I usually don't try to make too many pre-tied rigs unless I'm doing like a multi-rig. Or something that uh, maybe like a blowback, I'll do that at home. But most of the time I keep it simple. And I like to make my rigs fresh right on the bank. So as of right now, I think we're pretty good. I just got to get the rest of my gear together, get my pod. I uh, got my different signet pod today I'll be showing off later. Get my batteries all charged for my camcorders and my uh, photos, my cameras. You can't forget that. Trust me, the one time I forgot to, I'm uh, trying to take them with my iPhone on a self-timer at night and it just wasn't happening. So, All right, I'm going to get back to this. Uh, just want to kind of show you, you know, what I got going on with baits here, how I set my stuff up, and we'll go from there. Um, 
Again, I'll go through my bag, get rid of any trash I have in there, old rigs that uh, I'm not going to use anymore. Have my catapults back there. I can't leave him without those. This is like my have to have those. And uh, we'll see you pretty soon. Hopefully, it's, if I have anything else I'll add, I'll show you. But uh, maybe I'll show you rigs or whatever. But I'll be joining you bank side soon. Alright, back to the kitchen. I just finished making up my PVA bags. We're just using the original funnel web system from Corda. And I decided to do two Equinox and four live system. I like to make them usually fresh on the bank. But I know, I have a good feeling we're going to get into fast action. So as soon as I get there, like I said, I'm going to use two rods live system, one rod Equinox. So right off the bat, it's going to wipe out half of what we have here. That will leave me uh, two live system spare, one Equinox spare. That way, if I get a run real quick, I have another bag to tie on, uh, or stick mix, I should say, another stick. I'm so used to using bags, I keep saying it. So basically, um, using a fairly decent size one. I like to bait little and often. When I first get there, I like to use a bigger stick or a bigger bag, whichever you're using. And that way, if there's a fish there, you'll hopefully get them feeding confidently. And even a lot of the mixes I use, they track bluegill and other panfish. And as soon as they start feeding, the carp come in instantly, or catfish. Uh, as soon as the catfish come in, carp come in, vice versa. And usually we'll get into some quick bites. So I got those made up. We're good to go. As soon as I get there, I have bait to put out. Got our bait ready. Got our sticks ready. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get my rods and rigs ready. So I'll show you some of the rigs I'm using as soon as I'm done with that. I have to go through all my stuff here because some nights it's so dark, even with a headlamp, can't see too good. So I just throw stuff in here. I want to get nice and organized. So that way I'm going to have a good session today. And that's part of the thing. I try to be organized. I mean, I'm not, not trying to be too OCD here, but I try to be organized with what you're doing. Especially on the bank, like, no matter where I go, I always set up my stuff the same exact way. Like, I have my rods in one spot, my bag in another spot, my bait here. That way, wherever you go, you're not hunting around for your gear. And, because I used to do that. I used to go to a spot, I just put everything down on the ground, and then you're walking back and forth to find what you're doing. Get in a rhythm, you know, like, let's say I'm going to have my bait right here, my bag here, my rod bag over here. Well, I know as soon as I lay my rod down here, my bait's here, my rig's here, you know, everything you need is in one spot. Try to be organized. You'll fish much more uh, effectively. You're not messing around on the bank trying to find where you put something. Same with your uh, bags. You know, you have all your rigs in there. You know, put your size fours together, hooks. Uh, just make it easy for you to find. That way, every second, every minute you can save on the bank is you watching the water watching for signs of fish and whatnot. Who wants to be looking through their bag for 20 minutes to find something? I've been there, trust me. And it's no fun, so try to be a little bit OCD with it. Try to get your stuff organized. So I'm going to get my rods together, and I'll show you that here soon and some rigs. Okay, just about ready for
We're getting closer. Got my rigs made up here, did a bunch of blowback rigs. And I'm just gonna steam them down right now. A bunch of size one and then size four. I'm, like I said, I'm fishing bigger baits, so I wanna match the hook to that. And uh, let's go ahead and get the gas on you. So just take a minute until this heats up. And uh, we're pretty much, we're getting closer. Like I said, I want to go out uh, before too long. Prep time is essential. This will take a little bit longer than I wanted. I'm like an hour into it, hour and a half. So you do everything and whatnot, and, you know, the time adds up. And I still want to mow grass before I head out too, because uh, this is about the only nice day I think we're having. And until I get home from work, the grass is already getting a little wet from the, you know, it's dewy. It's dark at 6.30 now, so it's that time of year again. So I want to steam these down as soon as I get enough, as soon as this comes to a boil. Shouldn't take too long. Got my rods made up. This is the last rig I'm putting on the one. I already have a blowback made, a multi-rig on the one. I'm not even fishing it, maybe two inches off the bottom. I know there's weed, but it's... Uh, I forget what kind it is, but it's more of a strand than a big, you know, silt or anything like that. So it shouldn't be too big of a problem. And uh, what else is there? The, yeah, let's see. I'm trying to think what else. I just got to get my bags together. Make sure I'm not forgetting anything. And one thing I like to do, okay, just like I was making a PVA mesh, uh, I always take the refill with me. I always take extra. Even though I have plenty on here, you just never know what kind of day you're going to get into. Obviously, that equals into taking a lot more than you really want to. But it's, I always would rather take you know, 20 extra pounds of gear than have something that you know, I forgot at home. Like the one time I forgot swivels at home. I'm like, that's like the most essential thing that you most need for fishing, other than the hook. Well, I could tie it right on the main line, but to make it safe and everything like that, and make the bolt rig work and, and whatnot. You definitely want to go through your inventory, make sure you have everything you need, and uh, go from there. So I'm going to just double check everything, make sure I'm up to par, get my rods back in the bag, get my nets, my slings, uh, all my safety gear, and of course the camera, charge up this battery right before I go. I saw, I always take extra batteries, same with my camera extra batteries you just never know how many photos you're going to snap things like that so uh i'll be back in a minute i'm going to let this heat up shouldn't really take too much longer i know the stove heats up really fast it has the bottom that allows it to circulate the heat much quicker so we'll be back in a second here as soon as this comes to boil okay so we got the steam going here i already steamed down one and i'm just going to go through the line real quick make sure make sure that's good nice and flexible still got this new rig cone from solar because I have a habit of burning myself so actually like that goes around nicely there holds it gets a shape on it's already formed I'll just hit it real quick with the steam up close just to make sure it's shrunk as much as you can be. And then see how it's curled like that? I'll just hit it with the, the steam. That'll help straighten the line. Get an aggressive curve on that. Set aside. It's hard trying to hold this for the camera so you can see it. Nice curve there. Kind of mold around that. You can see there, that way you're not going to burn yourself. Just trust me. It has happened more than I care to share. I hit it real quick just to make sure it's shrunk down the full way. Again, it's all curled up. Get over the steam real quick. This fast, that way you don't melt the coating. And uh, we're nice and straight now. Hopefully you can see that. And my last rig right here. 
and just hit it with steam. There we go. I'm just about ready. Make sure it's fully shrunk. Again, let's get that curl out. All right, we're good. All right, we're about ready for fishing. Got the last of my rigs ready here. And uh, about to hit the banks here. I'll just show you my bag right before I go. And hopefully we'll get a big fish tonight. Okay, I'm finally here. It took long enough, mowed the grass, got something to eat. Actually cut my hair. So, session's about to begin. We got about 40 minutes till the sun goes down, so I'm gonna hurry up and rush around. I'll show you some of what I got going on here. And I uh, got the new Signet Multipod. Came out last year, I just got one. So I think i uh, show that off tonight. Uh, a little overkill for this lake. Uh, it's, I would say it's more for river, you know, things like that. But uh, it's definitely stable. As you can see, it's actually really calm tonight. I thought it was going to be windy, so I'm going to go with my light bobbins probably and uh, do those instead. So uh, let's get started before the sun is officially down. Full moon should be coming out real soon. Got both buckets here. Live system. Equinox. A little bit tricky to see. It's getting a little darker. Just trying to rush a little bit before the light goes down. Okay, one rod out. Basically, I'm looking at the hills across from me. That's where I judge. I look at the peaks or the vat the dips. That way, once it gets dark, I know where I'm going to cast to. I'm going to get my camera set up because I have a really good feeling about this rod going off quick. So let me uh, go ahead and do that right now. Okay, got the headlamp on me. Let's see here. I 
All right. Got the headlamp on me. As you can see, it's dark now. This is like half hour later from before. Got all three rods out. Left one's Equinox, 24 mil, 18 mil pop-up. Middle one, live system, uh, 24 mil, 14 mil pop-up. And then uh, I just have a live system, four, uh, 15 mil pop-up on a multi-rig. So basically I'm doing two blowback rigs and a multi-rig. Try it out. Uh, first thing I notice with my pod is I actually have to have it up a little higher for that center rod so the reel doesn't touch. And I'm, I'm so used to like slanting mine down, so just got to get used to that a little bit, but it's it's all good. I got it adjusted now, and it's only about a foot, a foot and a half tall, so that's perfect. So uh, one tip I like to do, right now it's actually warm. Uh, believe it or not, this time of year it should be in the 50s, 40s right now, and it's still in the 60s. And I wore my jogging pants and I'm sweating. You know, put your shoes back on, leave your boots down by the pod. Plenty of time to throw your feet in the boots when you get there. The other thing I like to do too, as soon as I land the fish, I like to put bait out over just that rod. Um, I still feel that there's fish feeding there even though you had caught one. So I have both my buckets of boilies down there. So no matter which rod gets the run, which hopefully will be soon, I can hurry up and put some more boilies out because as soon as I land the fish, it'll take me, you know, 30, 40 seconds to photograph it till I re-rig my rods again you're looking at like you know a few minutes so that's valuable time that as long as you have food there they're going to stay there slowly but surely feed them little and often they'll keep coming in coming in i've had this so many times where middle of the night till morning i have a lot of fish till like 4 or 5 a.m now i can't stay out too late tonight because i work tomorrow unfortunately but uh i feel we're going to get into some i had a few crashing out probably about 150 yards and uh, basically out from where I put bait. So I feel they are moving in. It just turned dark, like I said. The full moon should be coming through. It's cloudy, but it should peek through the clouds. And that way I can kind of tell where it's at. Usually when it gets over my center, for whatever reason, it kind of triggers them. I think it's just like their normal feeding route, you know, around that time. So if you have some bait out, you should be good. So I'm going to get back to fishing. Hopefully you can see me here. I have my headlamp just shine up at me. It's pretty dark because there's no, uh, it's like I said, it's cloudy. I'm hoping we'll get some, a few peaks of uh, clear sky. That way we can figure out, you know, what's going on here. But it's pretty dark and uh, I'll let my eyes adjust and I'll just sit back and watch what's going on. Once in a while I'll put on a lantern, but tonight I'm not going to. That full moon, once it comes through the clouds, should light the bank up pretty good. So uh, hopefully next time you see me, I'll be with a fish on the mat. Signing out. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Yeah. 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 Oh. Oh. I got one. Got one. good. Multi-rig. It has me around something. I can feel it dragging. Hopefully I can free it. I don't know what it is. There's some really big rocks out here so that might be it.
Yeah. 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 I, um, I personally, even though I do, I do a lot of short sessions just because my schedule's pretty busy. So, like, sometimes I might only get to fish maybe five or six hours. But, like, a lot of the lakes. Oh, there we go. There we go. Maybe not. Yep, got one, got one. All right, we have struck again. A new, a new equinox is gonna prove to be the big fish catcher. Love this stuff. 27 and a half, right a little, maybe a little under. I'm not too worried about it though. Awesome fish, blowback rig. 24 mil Equinox Golden Spice pop up. The stick mix I showed you before. What a fish. It just got done giving me a bath. I'm all covered in slime. It's well worth it though. I love it. With the full moon behind me. We're going to put this fish back now. Yes. She is amazing. Full moon madness. Yeah. Not that, yeah, sure, I'd like to go fishing every day, but at least if I can get a, oh, oh, there we go, there we go. All right, here we are again. Another one. All three rods have had a fish now. This was a live system acid pair plugged in the feed stem. So uh, here she is, 26 pounds even. Awesome night here, full moon special. That was a real hard fight, had me in the weeds. The weeds came in really good, but these fish are still getting down there, getting that bait. So, uh, Here's to an awesome night. I'm gonna have to go pretty soon. Got work in the morning, but uh, definitely gonna leave with a great memory of these. Uh, definitely liking my new pod too. I wasn't sure how I'd like it because it doesn't go as low, but I definitely love it. It's really stable. Since it's a double bar, super stable. So let's get this fish back. Get some more, hopefully. We still have a little time left, so maybe we'll get lucky. All right, here she is. Another bar of gold going out. Here she goes into the full moon night. Thank you. 
Shit, we just got double. Alright, unfortunately I don't think I got on camera, but you can see what we got here. There's a fish right there. And we got a fish right here. Got a double. Double run. We're about to bring him out here in a second. Man, I got crazy all of a sudden. Oh, 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 there goes. <laughs> that one wants to take off. I must have lost my rod. They just took off like crazy. Two good solid fish. We're about to show you in a second. Wow, things turned chaotic. I don't know if I got the last runs on video. I hope I do, but I doubt it. Uh, we have a 27, lower 27 to 29. Man, things are crazy. Here's the 27. <sighs> Beautiful fish, hard fighter. I actually thought this one was bigger than the other one. These were on live system and uh, acid pear. Stunning, stunning fish. Wow, I can't get over this. And uh, let me get the other one out here. All right, here we go. It's always the best part. Wow. She's about ready. There she goes. All right, times 10 to this one right here. Got my sling back up here. My retention sling out while I was handling this fish. Whew, what a night. Got the net up and down the bank here. Hopefully you can see all this. It is chaotic. nights where I wish I didn't have to go back to work tomorrow. But unfortunately, you gotta pay the bills. This one here is a nice chunk. This is just a hair over 29. Wow. This came on a single... Now, I'll tell, you, tell you what. The last fish... The last fish came up on a live system pop-up. This is the one that came up on the live system in acid pear. Wow. Oop. She's ready to get back. Whew. Check her out. She is all belly. She's definitely been eating good out here. Full moon. What a session. Let's see if you can see there real good. I have my headlamp on my camera, so it is actually working pretty good. Let's get her back. She is definitely more than ready to go. Man, I'm really lucky I had the retention sling. I could put two fish here, but I don't want to leave them out too long. Yeah, I want to be definitely safe. She's going to want to go quick, I know. Look at the girth on her. Let's get her out here. Wow. She is a wide backed fish. And another one just splashed. 
Whew. All right. The end of my session. I'm actually way past due to go home. I'm just sitting in my new chair. <laughs> this thing is awesome, by the way. You saw my other video. The level light chair. This is comfy, I gotta say. Makes it being on the bank that much more enjoyable. Well, I'm gonna be hurting tomorrow. Not because I caught so many fish and my back sore. The fact that it's like 1.30 right now and I have to be up at work around seven. I have to get up for work about seven. So to actually drive home, I bet you it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit. I still have to pack up all my gear. I bet you we're gonna get home about three in the morning. So I'm getting four hours sleep. It was definitely well worth it. I have five fish. The smallest one was just a little over 21 out of 26. Two 27s. I just rounded down on those ones. And then 29. Very productive full moon. It's right above me right now. It's so cool looking. And uh, before it was freaking me out, I kept hearing stuff behind me. Uh, being in the woods by yourself, you just don't know what's out there. It could be a little squirrel. It could be a bear. We have a lot of bear around here. And not that I've had any encounters yet where they've uh, scared me or anything, but you just never know. I still have one rod out. I just had a beep on it. I don't know if I'm going to get a run or not. Uh, I'm kind of thinking no. Uh, I have half of my stuff packed up. So I just have the essentials out right now. I couldn't ask for a better session. And uh, I'm really pleased. The water's cooling down pretty good. It's that time of year again where it's the fall season, the fish are on the feed. They were definitely on the feed tonight. Now, the thing that's really cool is I've fished this spot before when it was weedy and they just weren't having it. Tonight, they're just, they had to be going down you know, into the weed pretty hard to find my baits because every fish I brought in is weed up and down the line, pulling in you know, decent amounts. So I think it went well. I hope you enjoyed the, you know, kind of what I go through every time I go fishing. Uh, not every time, but like maybe once a month I go through, you know, all my stuff just to see, make sure it's all in order. Uh, the, as far as the baits go, a lot of times I have them just like in the buckets with the boilies. I just dump them out. It only takes a few minutes. A little prep time goes a long way with saving you time in the long run. As you saw, all three rods were definitely going off. Equinox had the biggest fish, but Live System definitely tore it up good tonight. I had a, you know, a couple 27s and stuff on the Live System. Uh, soon as I don't think it's cooled enough yet. As soon as the water cools down, probably another 10 degrees. It seems like Equinox really did good in the cold water, you know, water months. I think we still got about three to four weeks left before that really kicks off. Not to say that bait doesn't work good year round, but it just seems like it really excels, you know, in the fall, you know, in the cold water months, early spring. And uh, I better cut this off here. I don't want to talk too long because I need to get home and get some sleep, get stuff ready for work. Unfortunately, it's Monday coming up. Actually, it is Monday now because it's so late. <laughs> so, uh, I'll end this here. It's been a good night. Hope you enjoyed the session with me. I think I'm going to start doing some more of these. It seems like a lot of times I just do short sessions. You see me out here just fishing. I kind of want to show what I actually do to uh, get the results. You know, what baits I'm using, what rigs. Uh, blowback was destroying it tonight, too. Really good holds. And uh, I think I'm going to be using that a lot more. Used to use them. Just got away from them. But uh, if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe to my channel. Share it with your friends. If there's something for everybody. Beginner, intermediate, advanced. Try to do a little bit of everything. And I hope you enjoyed this. And we'll see you soon. Have fun out in the banks carp fishing.